Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here, and got a combination video boot camp and practice exam for you. Some good stuff here, and some practical demos also, not only on live Cisco routers, but on those dreaded PCs uh, that we have to touch. We're going to get to that in just a moment. You know, it just occurred to me pretty soon, these handsome slash attractive generic people up here are going to be gone, and there will be a picture of me when the new website rolls out, if you can imagine such a thing. I'm not sure the internet's ready for that, but that's coming very soon. One more thing I wanted to mention before we dive in, as many of you know, but some of you don't, the CCNA 2012 Video Boot Camp is now absolutely, totally downloadable. You still have that online access, but you can download one video or download them all. And of course, you get permanent access, 30-day money-back guarantee. You can ask me questions on our private forum. And as always, with all of my courses, I don't just give you a few minutes for a sample. I give you a full hour. And the free video content there covers OSPF, so it's definitely worth going out and checking out. I've got the bit.ly link there for you. You can find it in Google very quickly and from our blog and YouTube pages as well. Now, let me get to today's topic because even when you're primarily troubleshooting Cisco routers and switches in your job, you're still going to have to troubleshoot PCs once in a while. And I know when I was working my way up through help desk and did a lot of field support with PCs, I was like, you know, one day I'm just going to do routers. I'm never going to do anything else. Doesn't quite work that way. And also, of course, there's a chance some of these topics we're going to talk about today are going to come up on your exam. So it's a good idea to stay sharp with those PC troubleshooting commands. We're going to hit one of those right now. And I've got a couple of different screens to bring up for you today. So let me take care here. Now, I've made the font kind of larger here, much larger than usual so you could really get the detail but tell me exactly what PC troubleshooting command resulted in this output and you want to make sure that you give the exact command because of course we've got all kinds of switches and options and they all do very different things so again what are we looking at here and what command gave me this output it's a pretty common PC troubleshooting command all right, I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. We're going to dive to the next question, which actually is on Cisco routers. And in this particular situation, I've run a command. First off, I want you to tell me exactly what command I ran to get this output. And I know some of it's going off the screen because I did make it very large as far as the font goes. But everything pertinent to the command is on the screen. And also, everything pertinent to the next question is on the screen as well. Because as you can see, after seven rows of returns, I started getting these asterisks. Now, you'll notice that the asterisks stopped here. Now, I would have gotten 21 more, excuse me, 21 more rows of those if I hadn't stopped this command. How did I do that exactly? And this is one you got to know for the real world as well, because otherwise you'll have some bank vice president over your shoulder like I did once. And he's going to be saying after about row 17, uh, is this supposed to be doing that? And I said yes. <laughs> but um, let's head for the fourth question here. Which of these situations would result in a serial interface being physically up but logically down? And I know from experience when you first run into these, it's a little tough to keep them all straight. But we've got a missing clock rate a lack of LMI with frame relay, cable drops out of interface, or a mismatched end cap type. Which of those situations would result in the interface being physically up but logically down? All right, we're going to jump into the answers in just a moment. Before we do, make sure to join me out on Twitter, out on our blog, and out on our Facebook page as well. And also with all of our books going to Kindle formats and EPUB formats and all kinds of other formats here very shortly, depending, of course, on when you're watching this video, uh, we're also going to have a free ebook for you out there on Amazon in April. So make sure to look for that. Now let's go ahead and head back through the questions. And actually, I didn't have them on the board, so let's bring up that PC question first. This is a common troubleshooting command with a PC. It's a good place to get started. And what we're looking at here is a MAC address to IP address mapping table. And that is what we're going to see with ARP minus A or slash A or dash A, however you want to put it. Uh, I just usually say ARP A, but that is exactly how the command looks. Don't just run ARP. Because if you do, what the screen would give you is like 6,000 options for it. Nothing wrong with that. But for the exam, I would know that that is ARP and then the A option or the minus A option. Now, on the Cisco router, 
A couple of good exam tips for you here. First off, this is the trace route command. And let me screen back a little bit, followed by 10111. And you could see right here it did say tracing the route to 10111. The reason I really want to bring this to your attention is that there is a similar command on a PC. Now you're not going to have the same output, but it's going to look familiar because it's going to show you the IP addresses or the names of the routers on the way to the destination that you specify. But it's trace RT on a PC. Really important detail to keep in mind there because I have, when I've been working on both at one time, you know, I'll be on a router and I'll run trace RT and then the IP address. And it's like, what do you mean that command doesn't exist? I've been using that for 10. Oh, yeah. So it's real easy to get them a little mixed up. And on exam day, you definitely don't want to be doing that. So again, we run trace route on a router, good way to remember it, and trace RT on a PC. Now the next question I asked you was how I stopped this trace route and this works for pings as well uh, both regular and extended. You'll notice that the screen says type escape sequence to abort but it doesn't say what the escape sequence is and it's control shift 6 twice one right after the other and in my, in my book I say you know in rapid succession you don't have to break the keyboard you know hitting it that fast if you just do control shift 6 and then control shift 6 you know you're perfectly fine but that is how you get out of a trace route because if you miss enter this address here you could start getting the asterisk in row 1 and you don't want to sit there and watch 90 asterisks 3, three per line 30 lines just show up very slowly uh, so again that's control shift 6 twice and now for that last written question, uh, which of these would result in an interface being physically up but logically down? And of course, there we're talking about line protocol down. Uh, either a missing clock rate or a lack of LMI or a mismatch end cap type. That will all result in the, in the interface being physically up but logically down. If the cable actually drops out of the interface, then the interface is going to be down and of course we know about the administratively down if the interface is actually shut down but again logical issues you're looking at a clock rate missing and a DTE DCE communication uh, the uh, lack of LMI with frame relay that's always going to bring frame relay down and a mismatch end cap type say between PPP and HDLC thank you so much for taking today's practice exam and for making TBA part of your CCNA success story and we'll see you out on Twitter YouTube our blog and Facebook. Thanks again and take care.